Two consecutive wins for the Blue Jays post All-Star break. And at the very least, they've got a series win over the Arizona Diamondbacks, winning this one 5-2 this afternoon. And we all expected Zach Gallen, Kevin Gosman, a battle of the aces today. We'll be here before the game. Kevin Gosman will not go. And we're like, okay, he's now had an MRI. It's all negative, which is great news. But he's still not ready to go, which is a, which which is like, I'm okay with it because it, I don't want him getting hurt in the long run, right? You don't want him to go out there and force it and have it be worse and be out a month. You don't want that. So if he's going to miss a couple days, so be it. The Jays pitching staff is good enough to hold over. Plus, it's right into the all-star break, right? Everyone's fresh. Everyone's ready to go. Bullpen's fresh. All that stuff. So Chris Bassett gets the start today. And I thought the Bassett Hound was on fuego. I thought he was really, really good today. A lot of seven hits over six innings, which it didn't really feel that way. Um, but he did. Considering the first two innings, he didn't have a single hit. It doesn't feel like the rest. Anyways, but either way, he was really good. And the offense came through and got it done. All right. Six up, six down for Chris Bassett, which sends the Blue Jays into the bottom half of that second inning in a 0-0 game. And Zach Gallon, to this point, has already thrown 26 pitches in the first inning. And he goes out there in the second. And the Blue Jays' approaches at the plate were awesome. You could tell he wasn't finding location very well, so they were patient. They were patient, they were patient, they weren't chasing. They ended up getting, they ended up getting the bases loaded with only one hit. Whit Merrifield punched that ball up the middle for a base hit, and I believe there was two walks surrounding it? I believe so. I could be wrong, but I'm going to say there's two walks surrounding it. Either way, I believe Biggio did walk. Um, and the bases are loaded now with one out. For George Springer. But we have seen this story before, right? Either Springer's going to pop up to the catcher or pop up in the infield. He's going to strike out or a double play. Or... We all sense this stuff coming because we've seen it so much this year. But Springer drills one to left field for a base hit over the third baseman's head. In comes Witt. In comes Kirky. And the Blue Jays have a 2-0 lead. Fantastic stuff going on there. Really, really great. Then we move ahead to the top of the fourth inning. And drama starts to ensue. They get guys at second and third with two out. And Jake McCarthy hits a ground ball to second base. Nice play by Biggio. Problem is, though, Brandon Belt had to come over and then realize, oh, Biggio's got it. Now I got to turn around and go back to the base. Very close play at the plate. They call him safe. And on the play, two runs come in to score, and we're tied on an infield single. But he looked, he looked out, he, I mean, look, I'm a fan, so I'm going to say that, sure. But then John Schneider, it didn't take very long for them to go to review. And you look at the replay, and I've seen the replay quite a few times from quite a few different angles, and I saw a still picture, shout out Blue Jays Center, my boys at Blue Jays Center, uh, for, for posting the picture. And I'm going to show you guys right now, if I can. Um, let me actually do this. I'm going to do this right now and take a screenshot of that. Here we go. We're doing this live because I want to get you guys the best look possible. So what you will see here on that picture. Okay. Obviously the blue cleats are Brandon Belt's cleats and the other one is in the black cleat is Jake McCarthy. So Brandon Belt, I didn't screenshot that part, but Brandon Belt is on the base right there. You can maybe see the white part above the base. That is Brandon Belt's back heel of his cleat. Now, where do I see Jake McCarthy's cleat touching the base here? You see the white line, and that's his heel, and you see that little bit of dirt underneath the right back end of that heel. That means he is not touching the base. So to me, from that look, he looks out. They go to review. They, I presume, I'm, I really hope they didn't find evidence that he was safe. But I presume it was too close to call, therefore a call stands on the field. So if they called him out initially, he would have been called out there. I don't know. But I don't I don't agree with the call. But, but, in the next half inning, the baseball gods, they get it right. Because they never get screwed over. 1-2 count. Whit Merrifield up. He already has a hit against Zach Gallon to this point. It's a 1-2 count. And uh, leading off the inning... And he gets like a splitter change up, whatever Zach Gallon's got there, down and in, and well, he disposes of this thing. Black ball to left, pretty well hit. Carroll going back, and it is gone! Off 
the top of the wall and out for Whit Merrifield. And as I mentioned, the baseball gods give the Jays the lead right back as they should be. Great stuff there for Witt. He has been absolutely insane for this team recently, and he continues his torrid pace. Another multi-hit game for him, because what else is new? But you want to see some sort of insurance, right? A one-run game, you got a 3-2 lead. It's only the fourth inning. You want to get something else. Well, the Blue Jays' offense didn't get much else the rest of the way until the bottom half of the eighth. The question going into today, you know, is, well, even yesterday, and even after that, before that, is Jordan Romano available? Right? Because can he pitch yesterday? Well, he ended up being up 7-2, so it didn't really matter. And you're only in one run game here in the in the eighth inning, so you're gonna start seeing Romano warm up, right? No, you see Jimmy Garcia warming up, and you're like, oh, so that means Romano's not down. So interesting how him and Gosman are not in the IL, but they're not available to play, which tells me that they're just not quite there, and you want them to be a hundred percent. So I get it, I do get it. But then the offense adds some insurance. How many times this not happened for the Blue Jays? Bottom half of the eighth, Bobachek comes up and gets a splitter changeup thing down in the zone, and he drills it deep and gone into the Blue Jays' bullpen. Jimmy Garcia can't make the play, but who cares? The Blue Jays have a 4-2 lead. They weren't done. Brandon Belt walks then on four pitches, and Matt Chapman with one out doubles down the left field line. And for his 30th double of the season. And he guys like, guys at second and third with only one out. But we've seen this story before with the Blue Jays, right? With Mary for the dish. We're thinking of pop up to the infield here because he didn't strike out too much. So that's what that's what I was thinking. But I'm like, no. Come on, Witt. You got a two-run lead. Let's add on again. And he slaps one to right field. And is it deep enough? It didn't really look. Because you know Brandon Belt's at third base. And he tags up. And Jake McCarthy, man. Jesus, Murphy. That was a horrific toss. Spikes the damn thing in the dirt pretty much. And it rolls to home. And it's wide of home. It was just off the, off the wall. But Brandon Bell comes in to score. And the Blue Jays lead it now 5-2. And with Romano not available and Jimmy Garcia coming in, we feel a lot more comfortable with the situation. Okay? And in the top half of the ninth inning, let's be honest, Jimmy Garcia gets into a little bit of a hairy situation, leadoff single for Lourdes Gurriel Jr., gets Canzone to strike out swinging, but then, then, then Jake McCarthy hits a single, Gurriel's up, and now the tying run is at the plate. They bring off, they bring Evan Longoria off the bench, and he hits a little nubber off the end of the bat to Brandon Belt at first base, and there's two away guys at second and third. And Alec Thomas pops out to Matt Chapman, to end the ball game. And the Blue Jays have won the first two games of this series and have won, was it like seven of their last eight or something like that? Now they're playing some really good ball. And for the first time this year, they're 11 games over 500 at 52 and 41. Beautiful stuff. Let's get to these team stats, shall we? George Springer had a great day. He was two for three with a couple of RBIs and a, and a walk in the game. So a great day for him. Uh, Brandon Belt, one for two, but he walked twice. So what? I mean, Brandon Belt's doing Brandon Belt things with a run scored as well. And Whit Merrifield, outstanding. Two for three with two runs scored. Two RBIs in the home run for Whit. 291 on average in the season with a 345 OEP. This is the guy we expected to see last year. It is. And you're getting it now in full effect. He was outstanding. Eight hits total for the Blue Jays, but they made them count. Right? Seven strikeouts. They walked five times and were three of them on Gallon. Yeah, three of them were on Zach Gallon. Great. You know, eight, was it five runs on eight hits? You made them pay for mistakes. You love to see it. You had some long ball. You had some small ball. You had some clutch hit with Springer. Mm, Beautiful stuff. Pitching wise, Chris Bassett was really good. Six innings pitched, seven hits allowed, two runs. Both were earned five Ks and did not walk a batter. Uh, He was very, very good through six. I was very impressed, especially in a spot where he didn't expect to pitch today. And he had to. So really good stuff for Bassett. Pearson. Every guy, Pearson, Swanson, Garcia, every guy had the leadoff guy on base. So making a sweat, but got it done. Pearson, walk to lead off the inning like yesterday, but got a strikeout. Really nice job for Nate, nasty Nate Pearson. Eric Swanson, a lot of base hit to lead off his inning of work, but had a strikeout and nothing more. Jimmy Garcia, a lot of couple hits over an inning and gets a strikeout. Save number two on the year for Jimmy Garcia. And his scoreless innings just continue to go up. He's now at ERA almost four and a half, which is much better than what it, where it was. So the finale of the, game, the series goes tomorrow afternoon, 137 first pitch at Rogers Center. Yusei Kikuchi gets the ball for the Blue Jays. Tommy Henry gets the ball for the D-backs. So that's the situation there. Tommy Henry, uh, interesting pitcher, right? Five and one on the season with a 375 ERA. 
but only 51 strikeouts in 74 innings pitched. So a guy who doesn't strike out many batters. So we'll see how that one plays out. For Yusuke Kikuchi, fastball command. That's what I'm looking at tomorrow. You, if he's throwing strikes and quality strikes with the fastball, it'll play everything. Everything else will play for him. So we'll see how it goes, though. And I want to bring up my room. So let's, let's go, you say. Let's get it done before they have the off day uh, on Monday. All right? So that's, you know what, guys? That's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and the W today, smack the like button. Do appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button. You guys not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like? From today's game, for the Toronto Blue Jays, Twitter, Discord, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff is down below. So follow up there. If you guys have not done so already, and I will talk to you guys, of course, Jays edition, game three, the finale of the series goes tomorrow afternoon 137 first pitch at Rogers Center Tommy Henry you say Kikuchi is the pitching matchup thank you guys so much for listening and watching hope you enjoyed the video and of course the win today we'll talk to you guys then